Last week, the WHO announced the ending of the public health emergency order for COVID-19. But a lot of the statements coming right out of the WHO indicate that there's still a serious threat to the health and safety of everyone. Eric, can you tell us how this order could have gone through with them admitting straight away that there's all these problems? Yeah, thank you for having me. It was very interesting that the same day they announced that the public health emergency international concern was over, they still say it remains a global threat. Is They still say that COVID uh, is here to stay and the threat looms. And they still say, you know, one person dies every three minutes and counting. Over a thousand uh, people uh, a week in the United States alone, for example. And that's just who we know about. And they still say one in 10 people will suffer long COVID. Um, and in so many ways, that could be even higher depending on your your history and risk factors. So at the same time, they're saying the public health emergency is over, they undermine their own announcement with all these contradictions. And you could say, well, the public health emergency international concern doesn't have a legally binding meaning. But I want to say that words matter because the headline worldwide in all these newspapers is COVID pandemic is over, COVID is over, uh, all is well, it's safe now to do and resume everything without any other mitigations or other caveats. And that's very dangerous because I think the words matter because it sets the precedent and tells public health officials, countries that listen to WHO, which everyone reveres WHO and follows their guidelines for, for most ministries of health, that, you know, it's okay to drop all mitigations. And that's just not true. For example, just yesterday, you know, one of the top premier hospitals uh, in the United States, MassGen, put out an announcement that says, you may not ask doctors and nurses to wear masks when you're visiting our hospitals anymore, which is just ridiculous because hospitals is the most high-risk area. And the U.S. Um, uh, HHS data shows that hospital COVID-acquired uh, infections is at an all-time high, all-time high, higher rates of hospital-acquired infections than any other time uh, during the entire pandemic. And yet, at the same time, you know, you don't need masks in hospitals. And worse yet, you don't even need, you can't even ask your doctors and nurses uh, to wear a mask, even if you're high risk in a hospital. That's just ludicrous. And that's just, you know, a symptom of the failed leadership in which people hear and public health ministers and leaders hear from the WHO that it's over whenever clearly it is not over. So I think COVID, uh, the waves will eventually return and we will be more unprepared than ever before. So I really hope that we really, really refocus on what should we should do to protect people despite the uh, emergency being over. 